The Season 2 balance patch for Street Fighter VI is planned to release on May 22nd, along with the release of Akuma as the next DLC character. But previews of potential changes for Season 2 have already been hitting the Twitter streets, and that is because they've been doing a location test of Akuma with a different build of Street Fighter VI in Japan. So apparently people have been getting these tickets to go and try out and maybe location test the Akuma build, uh, which might include the final Season 2 changes. No photos or videos are allowed at this event, but people have been tweeting out the suspected changes from the build. So we haven't actually seen any of the changes reported in question, but there's been plenty of information spread around on Twitter, which suggests that there might be early changes for the season two build um, at this event. So before we get into the actual information covering what's in the, the Twitter notes and going into training mode to demonstrate the possible changes, keep in mind that this is from... Uh, you know, it's it's going through a game of translation telephone. People from Japan are tweeting. We're getting the translations to those tweets. So there might be some mistranslations and misunderstandings there. Uh, two, this uh, might not even be present in the final build. We did see this with Ed with the Capcom Cup build where these changes were actually in the final build. The minor nurse they had to like JP and Luke, that was the final build. But there's no confirmation that these changes will make into the final build. And then three, this is also people kind of guessing what the changes are. So there might be mistakes in what people assume to be changes in the game. So even if this is the proper season to build, there's still a chance that none of these changes are actually reported that are true. So let's go ahead and go through the translations of all these reportings and see if we can demonstrate what they might imply in training mode with the current build of Street Fighter 6. So of course, Hi Fight is uh, the goat here and provides a lot of the translations. And this is the big first one. This is the most universal change that has been reported so far. Drive reversal, negative six on block, originally negative eight on block, which is big, but also Every character can wake up raw drive reversal, question mark, question mark, questioning the input, what it could be. That is a huge change, a huge change in the gameplay. Um, let's go ahead and break down what negative six on block drive reversal would imply, and also this potential new mechanic of allowing raw drive reversal and what that can mean for the meta going forward. All right, so with drive reversal in the current build, it is performed when you are in block stun from a move by doing a forward and heavy kick plus heavy punch, but you must be blocking move to make the move actually occur. And when it does come out, it is currently negative eight on block. So if I bait out Luke's drive reversal here by pressuring with a jab or something, and I go for a drive reversal, I can punish with like stand medium punish counter into a full combo follow-up. So what this change is reporting is that this has gone from negative eight to negative six, which means your punish options are less. What does that imply? Well, for a character like Ed, that's pretty huge because that means um, I can't punish with stand medium because that's a seven frame startup move, as you see there in the frame meter at the bottom. Uh, my crouching medium is eight frames. I don't have a six frame medium. So if I were to punish a drive reversal, my best punish option would begin with uh, crouching light kick as the punish counter, counter option. So for example, this would be like my meterless combo route, which would be 2,180 damage. In the current build, however, I can do something like this. So I'm losing out like 700 damage in the way I can actually punish this meterless. And of course, it's exasperated more um, if you go like a full meter dump conversion. So if I were to go into this route to meter dump, this would be 3,758 damage. But with the negative six on block drive reversal, the best I could do would be something like this. Three thousand one hundred and thirty-eight, so six hundred less damage on that punish. So basically, drive reversal is less punishable. However, the big implication comes from when you are in burnout. So say, just like this example, I overextended on my pressure and I put myself in burnout. I have the opponent cornered, um, but I still have you know the, the offensive momentum. So if I were to pressure the opponent in this burnout state and I block the drive reversal in the current build, you know, uh, you take four more frames of block stun when you're in burnout, it would be negative four. So I could still potentially punish drive reversal, something like that, a punish counter jab into crouch light kick into a special cancel conversion. However, if this was only negative six natively, like the, the reports are coming from the new patch, this would be negative two on block in burnout, which means this would be safe. This would be safe. The fastest moves uh, characters have in this game are four frame moves. If something is negative two, it is safe on block. So, um, you know, it makes sense if someone is going ham and overextending on their offensive pressure. You know, really, if they maintain the corner, there wasn't too much of a risk to being in burnout and spending all your meter, especially like, you know, characters like Luke or whatever with things like, you know, uh, throw loops. It was sometimes worth it to just go into burnout um, and just keep applying offensive pressure. And then if they did do drive reversal on one of your meaties, 
you would block it and still just punish it. Now that is completely safe. So if you're on the defense when your opponent is on the offense and they're in burnout, drive reversal is safe on block. However, that's not the only change. So they also reported they can do drive reversal raw on wake up. What the hell does that mean? Well, let's think about, again, how drive reversal currently operates. So drive reversal has to be performed while in block stun. If you do forward and heavy kick on heavy punch when you're not in block stun, you're going to get DI. This move cannot come out unless you're actually blocking a move. Um, but that said, it, it, apparently you can do it on wake up. So maybe there's a window where if you do forward plus DI, it actually gives you uh, drive reversal instead of DI. So that also means wake up DI. Make sure to not press forward if you're trying to get DI to come out. Um, but that's interesting because that in involves a brand new game state that never existed. So, for example, if you go for a throw loop, what happens if someone does wake up drive reversal? Well, it's going to beat the throw. So we can't really even recreate that with this current patch. But, you know, if you do a jab and then try to throw, drive reversal is totally invincible, right? Drive reversal will just blow through whatever option you do. So if I try to throw here when he goes for drive reversal, it's just going to beat my throw clean. So if you just kind of imagine the scenario, I get a knockdown, I go for a throw loop, they wake up drive reversal, it's going to beat the throw. So now drive reversal is an option to beat throw loops. So not only did they make it safer on block, they made it so that it's also safe on block when the opponent is in burnout. It also beats throws now. So how would you even beat drive reversal? That sounds like a, a lot of huge buffs. You could, of course, like neutral jump debate it. Um, so if you could walk up to them on knockdown and neutral jump. And so neutral jump would beat wake up drive reversal and throw text. Um, you could also just still shimmy and not press anything and block it. You could also pressure with lights as usual and block it. Um, if you're in burnout, however, that's not really an option. If you block your, the drive reversal and burnout, you don't get a, a punish combo. So definitely a huge buff to drive reversal. I was really surprised to see this. Um, this definitely changes the, uh, the offensive and defensive mind games, especially when in the corner. And um, I think I'm a fan of these changes. However, I'm concerned about characters like Guile and JP, what that means for them. But, you know, when you're getting throw loops by Luke or, or DJ in the corner, it feels pretty helpless in this game. So this does add a new layer of mind games. It makes drive reversal much more uh, of a viable option to use on defense. But apparently that's not the only change to drive reversal. So once again, unconfirmed reports here, but we're seeing that some people are reporting that and not only is the driver reversal negative eight to negative six, that the startup is faster. Uh, startup is confirmed faster. Faster, Yes, looks like when they tested it, they say you can block after a light attack, but not after a medium attack. So not only is it safer on block, but it also beats more moves. So what does that mean? Let's take a look at how it works currently right now. So if I do stand medium punch, I can actually block this drive reversal. However, if I do something like uh, crouch medium punch, I can't. So it depends on the medium and how much recovery it has. You know, like stand heavy kick, it, it, it's, this is a heavy, but it's a plus one block heavy with very little recovery frame. So I can block the uh, drive reversal after, but stand fierce punch, I can't. So it varies based on the frame data of the move, which which moves are um, susceptible to being drive reversaled. But if this if the speed up uh, the speed of the drive reversal is increased, that means there will be no mediums like this where you'll be able to actually uh, bait out drive reversal. So not only is it safer, it can beat more things, which it might be good because I think a big issue that drive reversal had is that it wasn't good for beating things like crouching medium kick drive rush. So one of the main uses for drive reversal was to counter drive rush cancel from like crouching medium kicks because that was such a strong way to get in. So you could uh, react to a degree to the low forward uh, drive reversal, uh, drive rush cancel. And it was a good exchange on the drive meter because you would pay two bars and they would pay three and you would go back to neutral. So it was, it was a strong way to alleviate offensive pressure. However, if you were to delay at all and they didn't do drive rush cancel, you would end up having your drive reversal blocked. So it was very tough to react. If you do it immediately, like as soon as the low four touches, the drive reversal will still beat the drive rush cancel. But if you delayed at all and they didn't do it, then you would be really heavily punished. And even if they did drive rush cancel to jab, it's very easy to be late. And uh, once you react to the actual green of it, it's too late, so they'll they'll do jab and then they'll actually block after whiffing the jab. So you had to immediately commit as soon as possible once you saw the, the crouching medium kick and kind of just guessed they were gonna do it. 
and that was very difficult to do consistently and would often result on even when they did drive rush cancel they would do jab and you would block and uh, and they would block your driver on time and heavily punish you for that so if they increase the speed of the drive reversal then that might be a completely consistent way to easily react to any driver's cancel and use drive reversal to knock them off you on top of being a lot uh, more effective against a lot more meaty options so sounds like so far based on the reported changes driver reversal is going to be significantly improved going to be able to help counter throw loops in the corner and also counter more moves be safe when the opponent is in burnout and potentially help counter drive rush cancel a lot more effectively so huge buffs to drive reversal which which is overall a huge buff to the defensive options in the game so high fight also has this full thread of translations about the changes reported from the location test so the next universal one that's reported is they removed throw oki after back throw for everyone so what does that exactly mean let's take a look here in training mode after you score a back throw you can see here with luke he's still really close to the opponent and it's plus 14 um after the back throw recovers so what he could easily do is after landing a back throw he could just walk up to the opponent and then begin the uh the throw loop um options here and then rinse and repeat right so as soon as you scored a back throw it was your time to loop throw pressure strike throw mix up um, and why is that actually significant? Why are you even landing a back throw in the first place? It's because it's this is a super common scenario, right? You can land a perfect parry on wake up, if I can time it correctly. And then immediately back throw them, then suddenly the, the tides have completely turned, and now you have looping throw Oki offense instead. So I think the big implication here is that this is actually a nerf to the reward for perfect parry on lights in the corner. So if you land a perfect parry, most people would always go for back throw to secure the corner. And because of this, if they add more pushback, it'll prevent the ability to walk up and land a throw. So that in conjunction with the possibility of having drive reversal on wake up that will beat throws means that throw loops are much more situational. So it sounds like they're not in, they're not removed from the game entirely. Akuma was reported to also have a throw loop, so that might hit the balance changes they have. No one's throw loops have been reported removed but there's more defensive options to help mitigate when they actually occur. So uh, pushback after a perfect parry on a light when you do back throw into the corner means there's a bit more room to fight out of the corner if you got your turn stolen by perfect parry, plus a drive reversal on wake up option. Sounds like there's a lot more ways to slow down the corner mauling in this patch at the location test. All right, and now we have the first character specific change reported and that is for Ryu. You can choose between normal and Denjin ch uh, charge Hadouken Hashigeki Heavy will be Denjin. So what does that mean? This is actually something that a lot of Ryu players have been uh, clamoring for on Twitter. So uh, Ryu has, you know, good fireball game because he has three different strengths of fireball plus OD. So he has the light one, which travels the slowest. He has the medium with the medium travel speed and then the heavy uh, fastest startup, fastest travel speed. So because you can do different speeds of fireballs, it mixes up the timing, changes the areas of the screen that it controlled and sets up more fireball traps to keep the opponent guessing of when to jump, when to move forward, etc. The problem is, um, you know, his hash, uh, his dungeon charge is powerful in one way, and that provides a super fast multi-hit fireball um, that can travel very far across the screen, and also an OD variation as well with multiple hits, hits of, uh, you know, higher projectile durability. The problem is, it doesn't matter which, which strength you do for the fireball, light, medium, or heavy gives you the exact same fast version of the fireball, which is similar to his heavy fireball when not charged up. So that actually made his fireball game a lot less effective because he couldn't mix in the slow fireball for example to bait people from preemptively neutral jumping super common strategy is you throw fast fireballs to get people used to that fast fireball timing and then you mix in the the slow fireball so people are expecting to jump over the fast fireball then suddenly you chuck at them a slow fireball they just land on top of it you lost that mind game when you had dungeon charge so he was in a lot of ways less effective when he had the dungeon charge but now because he can choose to do the regular light fireball and keep that slow speed or the medium speed and then use heavy to actually spend the charge, he's a lot more flexible when he can use it. And also use fireballs um, and play the fireball game and keep the dungeon charge for, you know, his uh, his Hashogeki here and, you know, have more options of when he wants to use his dungeon charge. So it just makes Ryu a lot more flexible. So definitely a buff for Ryu. So the next reported changes are for Chun-Li, and this has 4 MP, 6 MP, cannot hit confirm, Super Art 2, less meter gain, and H. Kokoken more recovery. Let's break down what these mean and what these imply. 
So if you don't know about uh, Chun Li's back or forward medium punch, this move is an amazing poke. And what makes it also super strong is that you can actually hit confirm when you want to drive rush cancel in. So uh, you have a really late window to cancel the drive rush. So actual good Chun players can practice this hit confirm and then get combo conversions from it. So you don't have to commit to the drive rush cancel, which is very um, unique to Chun-Li. There's very few hit confirm things in this game for uh, drive rush cancels. They do exist, but this button is so good. And uh, on top of that hit confirmable, I'm failing to do it while talking to the camera. Um, but it is something that the, the top level Chun-Li players are doing consistently. They practice that heavily. That's why they're able to walk around, stab hands, and they don't waste drive meter on block with this move canceling it they only spend it when it's actually going to get in and get them a combo so uh that was really strong so chun would walk around just pressing this move non-stop and it would snipe people out from mad far and you could also hit confirm on really late whiff punishes and then uh just last second drive rush cancel and get a combo going so uh they determined that to be too strong and so that it's not going to be hit confirmable confirmable you're gonna have to commit to the drive rush cancel on hit or block to make it happen now so the other one is the nerf to the meter build during Super Art 2. So Super Art 2 is such a super strong uh, super for Chun-Li. And basically the strategy was just to go into Super Art 2 as soon as you could. Because it just did good damage and good corner carry. And while you're doing the combo, you know, if you have dry meter um, regen going on, it's going to continue the entire time. So I don't know the full combo for Chun-Li um, from the Super Art 2. I'm not a Chun-Li player, but you can see here, if I'm rebuilding Drive Meter, it's going to keep rebuilding the Drive Meter. Um, if you're in Drive Meter Lockout, though, from doing a, you know, some kind of Drive Rush Cancel, you'll still be in that kind of Lockout state. I mean, that already exists. That'll take some time for that to go away. But eventually, it will start regening as well um, after the combo. So basically, this is going to be a theme you see for other changes as well. They're kind of nerfing meter build during Super Art 2s in general. So that's a slight nerf to Chun-Li's level 2 um, so that you can't just immediately get the offense going after while building meter during the actual Super Art 2. And the last change is a nerf to the recovery of her heavy fireball. So a huge part of her strategy beyond just walking around doing um, back medium and, and uh, dry rush canceling that into offense was walking back and doing this fireball and this was actually super fast on recovery and paired with her uh her up kicks was actually really difficult to jump over you basically couldn't stop this so chun li would just walk back uh throw fireball and then drive rush in behind it and get some pressure or you know do hisanchu or something like that she just had a really oppressive neutral game at a distance with the 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 fireball with the recovery so adding more recovery there is going to make this a little bit less effective so that she can't just run away and set up kikoken and then try to follow up behind it to get offensive pressure because that's pretty much what she does she throws up the fireball then moves behind it and it's basically almost like a meterless drive rush a fireball drive rush cancel <laughs> that other characters are doing but she can do it without spending drive meter so this will be a little bit less effective so chun li might eat a few more jump ins for misplaced fireballs the next character to cover is dj so he had three nerfs so far reported jackknife move distance and hit range reduced od just cool to maximum more damage scaling and super art to less meter gain for combo after stopping midway so uh jackknife is his anti-air up kicks so if we look at an example here we can see that it can just cover pretty much the entire screen So potentially they're nerfing uh, its horizontal range and how far it can actually reach to be effective for um, his zoning utility because, you know, DJ has the, some of the best rush out in the game bar none and also really good uh, anti-air. You can't really jump into him from anywhere on the screen. It can also hit um, a cross gut like anti-air crosses really effectively. So potentially they're trying to nerf its utility in that sense. The other change is to the OD Sway kick follow-up launcher. This is a strong combo starter for DJ. And you can see here, um, it doesn't do any additional scaling currently. So after the first two hits, it then goes into 80% scaling. Um, so you can, you can do huge juggle combos here. I'm not a DJ player, so I don't have them offhand. But basically adding more scaling to the launcher here will nerf the damage output that DJ has because everyone knows that DJ's damage output is absurd. So that's a hit to how effective his damage output could be. And um, his other change is to the, the level two super. So I don't have the rhythm. I've actually never done DJ's uh, rhythm super. I don't even know how you do it, but uh, advanced DJ players, they, they have the option to end the, the uh, combo early. And then you could, uh, you know, extend the combo manually with a link after. So the idea being with that is that they nerf the meter build during that time. So it's a pretty common uh, across the board nerf. They're nerfing the 
dry meter regen during Super Art 2s. So uh, DJ is no exception to that. So if you stop the combo early and then you keep going with the manual links, um, you will have less drive meter to play with. So another nerf to DJ's offense there. On to Blanca, and only two changes reported for him so far. A nerf to the drive rush overhead, being plus one on Blanca instead of plus two from uh, drive rush, and then a buff to the crouching line punch into uh, medium Blanca ball, saying that it will always combo. So let's demonstrate what they're potentially talking about here. So currently, drive rush to overhead is plus two on block. So maybe they gave this one less frame of block stun. So why does that matter? So right now, if you were to respond with your four frame jab on block, drive rush overhead into uh, grab will beat that that jab, right? So you can't jab through that. It's a real strike throw mix that will beat your fastest button no matter what option they choose. Um, however, if we demonstrate this with say like um, drive rush, uh, stand light punch. So that is plus one currently, uh, as you will see here, if a jab and a throw meet on the same frame, the, the buttons will win, right? Buttons have priority over throw in this game. So if drive rush overhead is only plus one and someone mashes and chooses to commit to their four frame button, they'll actually beat that option. So it's a nerf to the throw option and the offensive pressure that, uh, Blanca gets after a blocked drive rush overhead, essentially. Uh, the other change is to make uh, Crouching Light Punch combo into medium Blanca Ball consistently. Now, I was trying to recreate this. Um, as From what I see, it pretty much always combos, um, like, at least in the Blanca Mirror. So maybe a dedicated Blanca main can describe more when this would happen. But if you do like a late cancel, you can recreate a situation where it actually does not combo. So you have to time it awkwardly so that you delay on the charge cancel to make this actually not combo. So I'm struggling to get that to happen. There it is. So I delayed a few frames on the cancel and the medium Blanca ball was blocked. So maybe that's what they're referring to. Like if you late cancel, it'll still combo. I'm not sure if there's other situations where even if you immediately canceled and sometimes it would whiff or be blocked based on the, the hurt box interactions. But apparently they're making that conversion more consistent. Next we have Cami with two nerfs and a quality of life buff. Uh, the 4MP HKH Hooligan plus Heavy Kick Won't Connect, still side switch. OD Spin Knuckle Projectile Invincibility starts late. And C, uh, Super Art 2, they change the input from a K to a punch. So let's break down what that means. So uh, when you're in the corner as Kami, you have access to this back meaty punch heavy kick target combo canceled into heavy hooligan and you can do dive kick here to get a side switch combo which is super powerful to have a meterless side switch like that that you can land and get the corner instantly so what they're reporting is you can still side switch with the hooligan it's just this dive kick will no longer connect so it's a nerf to the damage on that um which uh fair enough i guess the, si the side flop itself is the most important option now the dive kick just won't juggle there the other change for cami is regarding the fireball invincibility for od spin knuckle so apparently the fire Fireball invincibility won't begin until much, much later in the uh, the spin knuckle. So um, it currently, it starts on frame three. It can go through fireballs, which is nuts, meaning like strings into fireballs is very easy to interrupt with this. Um, so it's going to be a lot less effective at going through fireball strings and maybe not really effective at all. Um, however, apparently the heavy one is unaffected. So this one you couldn't really do through block strings, but it can still nullify projectiles for free in neutral. So uh, that's kind of crazy to me. I feel like this one is the much more annoying anti-projectile tool overall, but it is a nerf to this tool to get around projectile strings. The other change is a quality of life change to her Super Art 2, which is performed by doing double quarter circle back and kick in the current build. They change it to punch. Um, and you know, it can be done on the ground and in the air and some Kami players would accidentally get this move when trying to do things like dive kick and, and there's other potential input overlaps. So it's just to help out Kami players to not accidentally get uh, uh, super level two when they don't intend to do it. Next up is Honda. So Honda, his butt slam has more distance on blocks so that the crouching line punch doesn't reach. Uh, his five MP has more range moving forward and headbutt won't pass under jumping opponents, which means it can be punished. So what's the deal with that? So here's butt slam on block. Um, you know, it, it covers a lot of screen and it's plus one when he gets in. So, uh, you know, what happens here is you can go for a command grab mix up here. Um, I, but actually this is not really a true mix up. So here I'm gonna have the dummy move backwards after blocking the butt slam. So you can see here he's gonna walk away. If the opponent holds back while blocking butt slam, even though you're plus one, the command grab won't reach. Like none of your command grabs will reach in that instance. So you can walk away from the command grab mix. However, if they do that, your crouching light punch can still connect. So you can still keep them in block stun and threaten something, right? 
Um, and then also there's other options, right? You could just go like maybe crouch an MK, but at least check them from walking away, um, even if it doesn't lead to too much reward. Um, so they increase the pushback, which means uh, there's even less of a threat after blocking butt slam. So I think overall this might be a nerf, but um, it depends on the spacing traps that Honda can set up because he's still plus and Honda loves being spaced out to do things like his uh, stand medium punch, which is buffed. So stand medium punch is his plus on block um, move here. Uh, so this is now having more horizontal range, which it already has a decent amount. So it moves him even more forward and it's plus on block. So that seems like it's gonna be really strong for Honda. Um, so that's gonna be, going to be a problem for us Honda haters. Um, but they also had a nerf to the headbutt, which I think was really good if this is gonna make it into the final build. Um, so the headbutt, it, it, you know, it's a pretty degenerate move. It's safe on block, it's really fast. And even if you were to jump over it, like predicting the headbutt was coming, it can still just fly underneath you or you can land into it, right? But even if you predict it, it can just fly underneath you and fly across the screen. Based on the verbiage used, it sounds like this interaction where you jump with, with the headbutt and they fly underneath you, it won't happen. They'll probably just push air and stay in front of you, and so you can land and always get a punish. So if you jump over headbutt, you can actually get a punish. Like, even now, sometimes when you jump back... Oh, Honda reached. But there's a lot of interactions where you predict and you jump back, and you still just can't get a punish on the headbutt, right? So sometimes it was just a little too de de degenerate to deal with. So now it sounds like when you jump like this over the headbutt, they'll just kind of push air, a wall of air in front of you, and you will land and get a full combo punish, which I think is huge. Headbutt is dumb. I'm sorry, I'm a Honda hater. Uh, this is a scrub killer, and you know what? I'm a scrub sometimes, so I'm glad this movie is getting a little bit of a nerf. Next up is the poster boy, Luke. So Luke has jump heavy punch, a much bigger hurt box, and then uh, back heavy kick here, less plus frame, cannot combo into itself after a punish counter dry rush heavy kick. So let's check out what that potentially means. So of course, jump heavy punch is the jump in of the gods. So what they did here apparently is gave, given it a much bigger hurt box. So that means it'll be easier to anti-air. However, I feel like the big problem with this move is that the hitbox is way too low. Luke can press the jump in really, really early and get a full jump in combo from it. I mean, you can press it so early in the jump in that you have less time to anti-air, but having a bigger hurt box will make it easier to anti-air. Um, I just find that a little bit of a strange change because if you look at the actual hitbox uh, of this thing, the red is the hitbox, the green is the hurt box, the part you can actually hit. So they've increased apparently the green hurt box around it so it's easier to anti-air, but I think the problem is the hitbox just goes too low, um, making it such a super strong jump in. So. This means that it'll still be good offensively, but would potentially be a little bit easier to anti-air if you're looking out for it. Um, so that's the change with that. Now, as far as the uh, back heavy kick change, so Luke's back heavy kick was really good as a punish counter combo starter, and it did unreasonable amounts of damage. So if you block the DP, you can do drive rush into back heavy kick, and then another empty drive rush into back heavy kick. So right there, that only took two bars of drive meter to pull off instead of having to do an extra drive rush cancel. And this just led to absurd levels of damage. You basically got an extra heavy compared to like other characters that they had access to. There you go. I, I'm not a Luke player. I don't know if that's optimal or not, but that was a obscene amount of damage. And basically, you just get in like an extra heavy's worth of damage. 6,500. That's nuts. <laughs> I'm really not even sure that's optimal or, or not. So basically, the idea being you're not going to be able to connect uh, the drive rush heavy kick after the drive rush back heavy kick, right? This will no longer be possible. So that would uh, potentially limit the damage to something just like, or whatever it is. I don't know. You stand heavy punch. So that looks like it's going to be like 200 less damage on this combo, um, but, which still might not be optimal. I don't know Luke that well. Don't play him. Um, so a nerf of potentially 200 damage from a massive DP or super punish. So a nerf to Luke's access to damage. Next up, we have re reported changes for Guile. Sobot kick, less range, maybe, and less meter gain for loop combo. Didn't mention if it's exclusive to Super Art 2 loop or not. So pretty ambiguous with this one, unconfirmed reports here. So Sobot is Guile's back or forward medium kick. It has decent range as a poke within itself, but also, you know, it, it is a low crush move, so it'll go over lows from the opponent, which makes it pretty powerful to use in neutral. And as you can see here, without pressing crushing medium kick, um, it's actually very good at a real far distance to counter poke people. And then if you're even like a little bit closer and time it correctly, it can go over the lows and you can get combos from it as well. So it can also be used moving backwards in neutral as well. So a good way to build space and evade lows and uh, you know, still hit the opponent. So just a really strong move all around um, with multiple uses. So 
uh, nerfing its range uh, potentially will make that less effective. Now, as far as um, the level two changes or um, the loop changes, this might be part of like the sort of universal uh, nerf to, to super two meter build. So his level two allows him to do lots of loop combos. I do not play Guile, so I will not be demonstrating any of these loops myself. But, you know, the extended Guile loop combos that Guile has in the corner, potentially there's less dry meter and super meter that you can build during those combos. Next up, we have everyone's favorite magical wizard, JP. Super Art 2, more recovery, cannot combo from light, Super Art 2 into medium attack anymore. And o OD Stripog can combo into from medium attack and target combo. So what are they talking about? Let's take a look here. So uh, JP's level 2, super strong level 2, everyone knows that. So for example, if you're at the corner here, one common usage of this is you, if you get a random jab, you would try to combo into the level 2, and then you can combo like stand, medium kick, jump over, and get a whole juicy side swap combo, get the corner going, and set up your your game here. So what they're implying here is that you're not going to be able to do this medium kick here and keep the combo going. So if you have to do something like a light instead, that can definitely hurt his combo routes. So it's still possible to combo with that, but if you're spaced out, um, it, it could potentially make it so that you don't get uh, combos anymore. Um, so there's still options that people have to optimize, but it was definitely juicier options with the medium kick there. Now, OD Stribog, that is referring to the swipe move. Stribog is uh, JP's cane swipe. And this move is currently very strange. You can combo into it from Heavy Punch, and this causes a wall splat where you can immediately follow up with a spike um, or, you know, immediate level one. So most of the time when you're getting into a heavy, you're doing it from a drive rush cancel, and you would just do like Crashing Gears to heavy swipe instead of OD, because you actually get better combos here, right? You do Fireball and before the spike, and it also allows you to, to convert with much more flexible options. Um, so there really was no use for the OD swipe. I, no one ever used it. Uh, but if you can combo into it from mediums, as you can see here, that doesn't currently combo, that means you're gonna have um, much better routes with less meter usage. So instead of being forced to drive rush cancel to get this going, and which spends three bars, you could potentially go straight into the OD strip hog and have some utility for conserving drive meter with your combo routes. All right, looks like we have reports of big buffs for Aki. Light Serpent Lash, less knockback distance on Toxic Trigger, Crumple on Punish Counter. Uh, 2MK is now plus 5 on hit from plus 4. 5 HP, faster startup. Venomous Fang, projectile invul. And then maybe faster speed on Serpent uh, Lash, the medium strength. So let's break down these changes Changes here. So the Light Serpent Lash, that's the uh, the poison whip here. So they're saying that uh, less knockback on the toxic trigger. So when you poison proc here, so when you pop the poison, she does go into a, a comboable juggle state. If you're in the corner, you can do things like go into sweep, um, or you know you can do things like crash heavy kick as well. But the juggles, it, it's pretty tight. She's pretty, they're pretty low to the ground. And mid screen, it's pretty hard to get anything. Um, you know you can, you can go into sweep if you're up close, but at any distance, that becomes impossible. Um, you can also do things like level three, take confirm after, juggle after if you're point blank. So uh, potentially, because of less knockback distance, you can get more of these combos mid-screen and also uh, when you're in the corner as well. So that improves your combo ability. They also mentioned that on uh, a Punish Counter, it's going to cause a crumple state. So currently on Punish Counter, um, it doesn't really do much of anything. You see the medium one actually causes... Uh, it does a crumple state when poison proc, um, but you see it launches on Punish Counter. So when they're poison proc the medium does do the, the whole juggle, or sorry, crumple. So it sounds like on punish counter, this will cause a similar crumple state that the medium does, which is like a huge combo starter. Like this is this is Aki's biggest combo starter for, for a lot of situations, right? You, you can get dry brush in into, I don't know, Coward Crouch, I think. It, it's been a while since I played some Aki, um, but she has lots of combo options from this, right? So... Um, sounds like she has more ways to get the party started with her light whip now. So, they also mentioned that her crouching medium kick is now plus 5 on hit instead of plus 4. So, what does that mean? Um, I'm not sure. They use an example of combos into light, drive rush 2MK into heavy kick. I'm not sure why they say that. Um, because you can link into the, uh, the crouching medium kick from a drive rush jab. But if you do drive rush from a light, you're not going to get the... Crouching MK, unless there's something I'm missing here, I don't see any option to go into the Crouching Medium Kick from a light directly, but it does mean uh, more combo options, so this would be able to link then into Stand Light Kick on regular hit, which is means if people are walking away from your pressure, 
you'll be able to get combos like that, which is really useful, actually, because uh, walking away from Aki, she's not a low forward drive rush character, so holding back and walking out of her pressure, especially mid-screen, is not the worst risk-reward idea, but now she's going to have actual ways to punish you for doing that in a, a much more damaging version. She could do, like, you know, jab as well, point blank, but Sand Light Kick has more range, um, so it can, com can confirm from further out. And as well as Drive Rush in, it's going to be plus 9 on hit, which means it will combo from a low and straight into Stand Heavy Kick. So her Drive Rush low option will be more threatening with more damage as well. So Venomous Fang is now reported to be Projectile Invincible. So Venomous Fame is her launching stance out of the Coward Crouch, which um, is already used to actually dodge projectiles. So it's pretty situational. But uh, the way it works currently is that... It just kind of goes around the uh, projectile. So you see here, it looks like it's projectile invincible, and I'm punishing Aki for the projectile sometimes, right? But really what it's doing is it just has a reduced hurt box, so it's dodging the projectile. And Aki's projectile is kind of high in the air. But if I actually dive into it, I'm just going to get hit every single time, right? So some projectiles are easier to dodge than others. And uh, look, think about like Jury's projectile. If it's if it's far away, I'll go over it. If it's up close, I'm going to dive right into it, right? Um, DJ's uh, EX Beyblade covers the whole screen, so I'm not going to get around that. So it sounds like this is going to be more effective at punishing fireballs. Would really help in like the Guile matchup and DJ matchup, which are matchups Hockey definitely struggles in. Next up, we have Jamie, and his changes reported so far are Heavy Palm safe on block, not in throw range, negative two. OD Command grab, more damage scaling. His Crouching Meaty Punch plus five on hit can combo to OD Palm, and uh, his Stand Meaty Punch plus two on block. So let's cover what actually changed here. So Heavy Palm is currently uh, negative, I believe, five on block. So um, the, the reason it can be safe sometimes is you can space it out. So... It can be negative five at this range, right, and be safe to jabs. But if done up close, you know, you'll get punished for doing it too close. So it is a spacing tool that you could use, um, but it is punishable up close. So the reports are that it will be safe even when up close. Now, I don't know what they mean about, like, negative two outside of throw range. Um, maybe the pushback has changed, but no matter what, you couldn't, you weren't in throw range previously. So maybe they decreased the pushback, but decreased the frame um, disadvantage on block as well. I'm not sure but apparently this will be now safe to use at any range. So the other uh, change is the added scaling to the OD command grab, which you have access to in level three. And that makes sense to me with these other buffs, because if you do OD command grab and then just go straight into his uh, his CA, the damage is actually the highest uh, command grab damage in the game, right? I'm, I'm not exaggerating about that. Um, this with the additional drink scaling, especially if you're in level four, it does a ton of damage. So 5,400 damage there. If you were in level 4, it would do even more damage than that. So um, they're nerfing the damage scaling on that to make it more solid and less gimmicky overall. So a big change here also is 2 MP Crouching Medium Punch. is now plus 5 on hit, apparently. So um, currently, the Crouching Medium Punch is plus 3 on hit. And you can see here, if we try to go into OD Palm, it misses by two frames. So making this plus two on hit means this will combo into o OD Palm, right? And so that's a big combo route for, for Jamie to get damage and also set up drinks. So that definitely makes his conversions a lot uh, stronger, you know. Just some easy ways to get into OD Palm you can definitely help him out, um, which don't currently exist. And the big one, I think, is Stand Medium Punch being plus two on block. So currently... This move is plus one on block, which is decent, but, you know, it, it limits his uh, pressure options, right? So um, he can do things like Crouching Light Punch after to, to counter hit on uh, a mash, for example, and then uh, attempt to get a combo from that. But really, you can't get too much if people uh, disrespect the plus frames here. You can commit to a wreck of you so please. But say this was uh, delayed by a frame here to simulate having one more frame of advantage on block. What does that give you from stand medium punch plus two? Well, stronger plus frames on your mediums means more freedom to condition people to not press buttons and then walk around and go for throw, of course. Keep that in mind. Think of, like, jury. Um, but also, you can go straight into stand fierce. Stand fierce is five frames. You're, you're going to be uh, plus two there. This will beat your four frame jabs. So that's that's very, very, very nutty. <laughs> so stand fierce, you thought that was... Uh, Oppressive from Jamie before, it's going to be a whole new level of rush down from this character if that uh, this stand medium punch buff exists along with the five frame stand fierce.
Next up is Zangief, and only minor changes reported for the big boy. 6 HP plus 7 on hit, and stomping first and second is not a true block string. So let's investigate that. So 6 HP is, of course, the, the headbutt here, and currently it's plus 6 on hit instead of plus 7 like reported in the uh, upcoming potential patch, which means, you know, your best combo options usually are like light, Gretchen light kick into a maybe OD Lariat, something like that. Um, but what this means is if this goes from plus 6 to plus 7, you can instead on a regular uh, headbutt combo into Hellstab, his down toward uh, medium punch here, which leads into regular Lariat, so a better meterless combo option, or of course, you know, doing something like uh, Hellstab into uh, level 2. You know, Zangi players, they know how to do that. I'm not a Zangi player, but you know, you have definitely much better um, drive meterless conversions from uh, headbutt as well. Um, so that's definitely a big buff to his meterless damage and mix-up game between the strike throw with the headbutt for sure. Now, as far as the stomp not being a true block string, that's kind of weird because I think that's just a uh, misunderstanding. Um, it's it's currently not, so I don't know if I'm missing something, um, but stomp right now, between the first and second hit, it's already not a block string if they block all, right? After the first hit, there's a gap there. So I'm not sure what they're trying to imply, if there's something I'm missing, but I think that might just be, you know, people forgetting how this move actually works. All right, now we have Kimberly with Odi, Senpu, Kyaku can cancel into Super Art 2. Super Art 1, you can choose to use a spray can or not. H, Vagabond Edge, combo into Odi, Air Grab, and H, Senpu, Kyaku, faster, Air Attack, and Vol. Maybe? Let's check them out. So, the, the first change we have here, Odi, Senpu, Kyaku, that's going to be the Odi Tatsu. So, uh, currently, you know, you do uh, Super Art 2 with uh, Double Core Circle Back. You can't cancel this into the Super Art. So, maybe a more damaging combo ender option here for some routes to go into the Odi Tatsu. But also, uh, another utility is as anti -air, right? anti air Odi Tatsu uh, comboed into the level 2. So, a more potential damaging anti air option for Kimberly. Also, with Super Art 1, in case you didn't know, <coughs> it uses a can. So, this will do 2,000 damage when you spend a can. Um, and you have no option, it just does it. But if you do the level one, when you have no can stored, it actually does 200 less damage and doesn't go to can down. Um, so the can is a resource that Kimberly uses for setups and offensive pressure. So now you can choose to use uh, use the can for the damage for Super Art 1 or keep it for your offensive setup. Um, the H Vagabond Edge combo to grab, that's going to be the heavy elbow here. So now you can do this into the uh, air grab, which is quarter circle forward um, punch oh two punches in the in the air so currently you can see that this doesn't work so new combo route option for damage for kimberly there and then heavy tatsu um maybe sped up so maybe a better anti-air they're speculating but that seems to be the reported changes for kimberly so for rashid so far no real changes found besides the apparent universal nerf to meter build during super art 2 so super art 2 no meter gain when active even throw so his sounds more severe where it's not uh, reduced build to the meter but no meter build whatsoever even if you make them block and take the throw so you know Rashid players you would start the round and then they pretty much just activate uh level two and even if the opponent is blocking everything um you know they're building crazy amounts of drive meter so uh, you're being rewarded doubly for putting level two out there and even if they were to you know block entirely and take the throw you also build drive meter as well so apparently there will be a meter build lockout during the level two Next up is Ken. We have one minor nerf reported for him. Medium punch, heavy punch, target combo. Always a true block string. No delay cancel. So why is this a nerf? So if you look at the move they're talking about, they're talking about back medium to heavy punch, target combo. The reason this is a nerf is because Ken had the ability to either delay cancel or not. So this, the back medium itself is negative two on block. So you could potentially take your turn back after by pressing something like a crush and light punch, right? If, if Ken tried to pressure after, um, he wouldn't be able to take his turn back you can interrupt however if you do it the immediate turret combo it's a block string so if you're mashing between there your button actually doesn't come out so you won't be uh counter hit by the turret combo but ken could delay the turret combo to bait you for mashing which would incentivize you to not mash which means that you can go back to doing things like back medium back back medium walk back medium then turret combo it made his offense much more flexible and you didn't know when to take your turn back now if you block back medium you can match jab pretty much every time and even if they do the tower combo you're going to be safe you're going to be stuck in block stun so it makes this not really uh, a pseudo mix-up anymore so it's a nerf to ken's offense 
one change found for Manon, and that is four HP combo into the OD Renverse Grand Fote. <laughs> okay, so this is hard to translate, but that's back heavy punch into her ballerina spin kick. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So you can see from back heavy punch, you can combo into the OD hit grab, but if you do back heavy punch into the kick, uh, from the OD hit grab, you see it doesn't combo. So we don't know if there's more hit stun on the back heavy punch or if the OD spin kick from the uh, hit grab it has been sped up to make this combo possible. But this matters because if you go into the OD spin kick, that's a route where she gets more juggle options. She can also combo into her uh, level one and level two supers. So it makes her combo game from back heavy punch uh, more flexible and more routes to get into her supers as well. So what did Lily get? A character who many consider to be the worst in the game. She got a bigger hurt box on whiff for her two HP, her crouching heavy punch. So this button is definitely a very strong button. Um, so it can be pretty difficult to whiff punish. Um, but apparently that's what they did is they gave this one a bigger hitbox on whiff. So a uh, bigger hurt box on whiff, excuse me. So yeah, uh, good for Lily. As for the rest of the cast, Dalsum, Jury, Marissa, Ed, no info. P.S. Nothing on this thread is confirmed. Thank you to HiFi for translating all these reports from the Japanese scene as these reports are coming out. And yeah, as the man himself has let you know, this is not confirmed. We do not know if these changes will actually make it into a final build. We do not do not know if these changes are even actually real on the build people are currently playing on. And there could be mistranslations and uh, misunderstandings all over the place. So take all of this with a huge grain of salt. But that's all the changes reported so far for the Akuma location test. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.